advice do you give to young people who want to go into politics, and especially the high level in which you've worked? You were a speechwriter for President Bush in his first term. You were there where history was being made. What do you tell young people who say, Casey, I want to do what you've done? Well, I wish there was a formula I could give them. I, I sort of backed into it. Um, I suppose the things that I would recommend, um, number one, learn to write. I mean, if I could give one piece of, of advice as far as a skill set to build, learn to write. Take English classes, um, you know, take writing intensive classes in history, and because if you can write, you can do anything. Bosses will, will pay lots of money in any industry for a young staffer who can write. They can teach you their business. They can teach you their industry. They can't teach you to write. And that opened lots of doors for me, and I think it will for anyone else. And the other thing is, you know, when you're in college and you have summers off or if you can get a semester off, do internships. Go to Washington. Um, spend a summer working for your congressman. Uh, spend a summer working at a think tank. It's amazing. Washington, in particular, is a very small town, and it's very driven by relationships. Um, you know, you, you intern for one person, and then, you know, that person goes and to another job, and, and he hires you at his next job. That kind of thing goes on all the time, every day in Washington. So I always encourage people to, to go to Washington or their state capital and do internships and, and build those relationships and then really nurture those relationships. Stay in, stay in touch with people, call them, email them, because you never know where those people will end up. I mean, I always tell people my first boss in Congresswoman K. Granger's office in 1997 was her chief of staff, Ken Melman. And Ken Melman later went on to become political director at the White House, campaign manager for President Bush in 04, and eventually chairman of the National Republican Party. So uh, relationships really matter, and uh, and you can get those relationships if you can invest and spend some time in Washington. So those would be the two tips I would give people. And, and again, there's not really a formula, but I think those two things would really help. What was it like working for President Bush? I, it was a great experience. I mean, being in the White House is uh, it, it's very surreal uh, to see all the history there, and, and particularly being a history lover like myself. Um, working for the president was, was a great privilege. He's a, a very disciplined man, a very uh, driven man, a uh, very principled man, and, and uh, you know, it was, it was always kind of a, a challenge to write for him because he has a, a particular way he, uh, he speaks and he writes and he likes simple declarative sentences, as he often said, and so you had to kind of learn his cadence and his tone. But uh, I think anyone working in any White House would tell you that it's a great privilege and uh, it's something that you'll never forget. It's also, by the way, uh, and I remember Peggy Noonan saying this when I was when I was a teenager, it's not a bad idea to leave there at some point. Uh, you can kind of get sucked in and enjoy it so much that you stay. It's a good thing to do, but it's also a good thing to leave and go on to other things, and that's, that's what I'm happy that I did as well. Personally, what are some of the personal qualities besides the discipline of, say, President Bush that you admired or observed about his leadership style that would be useful for students of the presidency to know? Well, he's very courageous. Uh, he is a risk taker. He's not afraid of, of uh, public opinion. He's not afraid of, of bad poll numbers, as we've obviously seen in the last couple of years. Uh, he's willing to do what he thinks is right. And he has gambled, and we'll see if he's right, that history will uh, essentially vindicate him on some of these decisions that he's made. Uh, and I think that's a, a, a very noble posture. I mean, I think uh, a lot of presidents could learn from his willingness to, uh, to, to stake out a position and then to risk um, uh, a lot of, uh, of his capital on it. I mean, I know uh, Michael Beschloss, the historian, always says that you judge great presidents by what did they risk everything on. And, uh, and I think that's a pretty good test. And I think uh, this president... Uh, gambled quite a bit. He gambled on uh, on freedom around the world. He gambled on democracy in the Middle East, and it remains to be seen how that'll turn out. And, and historians uh, will be wrestling with those issues for uh, for several years. But uh, I think that th those are really good qualities uh, in a president. I much prefer a bold uh, president who, who's not afraid to lead than than one who uh, studies uh, polls and, and focus groups. One last question, because I know we have to get you into the terminal here before, or maybe we'll follow you in the terminal. This is such a, <laughs> such a great, such a great uh, interview. But I wanted also to ask you of your experience there in the White House. Um, what would be the story that you like to tell? Uh, you know, a very specific vignette about what it was like. Uh, say the most exciting moment when you just pinched yourself and thought, "I'm here, part of history." 
Well, I, yeah, I mean, there were a couple of those moments. The one that's the most obvious, although it was a, it was a very sad moment, was 9-11. Mm. Because even in the midst of all of the drama of 9-11 and, and the Secret Service sort of ushering everybody out of the building and and coming back later that day and, and the security apparatus already having been increased dramatically, even in the midst of all of that, you could still see that the government still worked, uh, that there still was a president. Uh, e even that day when we went across the street to the White House, um, uh, the business was going forward, people were on the phone setting up the president's speech that night, working with the, the, the TV networks to get him time. and. I mean, the government continued, and I think that's a great lesson that uh, even in the face of tremendous challenge, and, and in this case, tremendous terrorism, um, the Founding Fathers created a, a pretty perfect uh, system. It's, um, well, I, I guess as Churchill would say, it's, you know, democracy is, is the worst form of government except for all the other ones that have ever been tried, but it's, it's pretty close to perfect compared to everything else, and it works pretty well even in a time of crisis, as we saw on 9-11, and that was... That was a moment that, that I probably pinched myself, and, and to be able, having read history all my life, to be able to see the American Republic work in a crisis situation uh, was very reassuring to me and, and really uh, quite memorable to be there and, and to experience that and to, and to live through that. Casey, I so appreciate your answering these questions on the way to the airport, inaugurating our Road Scholars <laughs> program. Uh, are you going to come back to Grand Rapids, you think? I would love to come back to Grand Rapids. It's my first time here. Uh, I got the full experience with the snow and the wind and everything else and uh, had a great time and uh, love hearing another Texas accent while I was here, so I felt at home. So I'd love to come back. I was very impressed with uh, the Houndstein Center and very impressed with the Ford Museum and uh, very impressed with the town. I just I had a great time. Great. Well, we're going to have you back. Thanks. Look forward to it. Thanks so much. Okay. All right. Yes, this is the book that we've been talking about by Casey Pipes. It's called Ike's Final Battle, and we were really proud to have Casey here. He gave a great talk at the Ford, and we're going to have him back.